What up guys? It's your boy Bow Guy here. We're doing something a little different today. So if you like this, don't forget to hit that like button, comment, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, I hope that you enjoy the video. Maybe I'll try to do more of these in the future. Anyway, let's get into this. Ho 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 ho. Ho! So some of you guys may have heard about this whole scientific announcement that was announced earlier this week. So at the beginning of this week, a Chinese scientist by the name of He Jiku, I'm sorry if I'm butchering up that name. Anyway, he came on YouTube earlier this week, it was like Sunday or Monday, and announced that he had indeed made the world's first gene edited babies. And he did this by editing a gene that would prevent them to have HIV. And you can imagine, not a lot of people were too happy about that. So I figured since I have a relatively a good number of friends on social media, and since I have knowledge in the sciences, I could kind of relay that to you guys and put it into a more simpler context and have you understand why everybody's in an uproar about this and what was why they even do this experiment. So hopefully like maybe you guys will understand this. It'll be a good communication. Anyway, to give you a little bit of a backstory. So this Chinese scientist, he's at the Southern University of Science and Technology in China. He was a professor there, but apparently he got put on leave back in February. So basically this was going on for who knows how long, like without anybody knowing about this with the accession of those that were internally involved. So like I said, basically what he did, he created the world's first gene edited babies. And these babies were indeed twins named Lulu and Nana and they had a gene edited inside them that would theoretically prevent them from getting HIV in their lives. Now, I'll explain the biology behind this a little bit without getting into too much jargon because, again, I want to keep this simplistic to where everybody gets the whole idea of what's happened here, despite whatever your background is. So basically, when I say gene editing, what that means is actually what it says is it's a technology that you can actually edit a genes and scientists use this to delete genes or edit genes so that way they can study them and determine their functions. Anyway, this technology called CRISPR, it's a new, newer technology. It's, it reemerged within the last couple of years and it's pretty much taking the whole science community by storm. Like everybody's pretty much using CRISPR for their gene editing experiments. And the reason why everybody's using CRISPR is because it's real cheap and very simple to make compared to other gene editing technologies. And it also has a high gene editing efficiency rate as far as editing your gene target. And so basically what the scientist did was he used the CRISPR technology to edit a gene that's involved in our immune system. It's called CCR5. Again, don't worry about the acronym, just know that's a gene name. And he edited this gene because there's been studies shown that if you indeed edited this gene in mice, those mice are indeed resistant to HIV. And the way his lab did this was basically they surveyed for couples that were that came forward voluntarily. And those couples had to have like a father who was HIV positive but the mother was not. When they found up couples to volunteer for this study, they basically took the embryos from the mother, gene edited those embryos, so they gene edited that gene from the embryos and brought those embryos to full term. And that's how you got Lulu and Nana, the twins that were born. And so during his YouTube videos and at a conference that he presented a couple days ago, he was saying that this was one of the more prouder moments in science. That's bull crap. And I know what you guys are thinking, like, I'm a scientist, it's a scientific breakthrough, I should be excited about this. No! From this study, it was obviously unethical, as you guys can tell from just hearing from me. And then also, if you look at a scientific perspective, there was just bad rationales to the experiments. Like, the reason that he did these experiments didn't re really make any sense, and I'm about to go into both of those. So here's why this experiment was not really a good idea as far as like a scientific rationale wise. For one, guess I said earlier that CCR5, that it's been shown in mice that if you mutate this gene in mice, that they are D resistant to HIV. There's been studies that show that, but there's also been other studies that show that if you mutate this gene, 
you get no difference. So the mice still get sick or still get infected with HIV. And my whole thing is like, if you're gonna do something this controversial, at least do it on a gene where you're pretty sure that if you edit this gene, it's gonna work. Another point to point out is that, yes, while CRISPR is a powerful technology, it's gonna take over the future in genome editing in the near future because everybody's using it now and it's just getting better and better. That said, one of the big factors with CRISPR is it has a lot of off-targeting. And what I mean by that is when you have off-targeting, so let's say you wanted to edit gene A, but when you get your results back and you sequence it, sequence your DNA, you have gene A edited, and then you also have this other gene edited as well. That's off-targeting because you were only meant to edit gene A, but you get other genes edited in the process. And when you have mutations all over in your DNA, you get this thing called cancer. I don't know if you guys heard of that yet, but yeah, that's how cancer works. And the scientist claims that he's looked at the twins' DNA. He says he doesn't see any off-targeting, but he has yet to officially publish anything in a scientific journal. And words mean nothing unless you publish things in a peer-reviewed journal. So yeah, I'm not buying it, and a lot of scientists in this community, they aren't buying it either. Another thing, and you guys are definitely going to laugh at this a little bit. So let's say this CCR5 gene, if you do edit it, the twins indeed do become resistant to HIV. So let's just say that as an example. There's been studies shown, and it's been consistently shown, that if you edit this CCR5 gene in mice, while they may be resistant to HIV, they're also going to be more susceptible to viruses such as, I don't know, West Nile virus, uh, influenza, and a bunch of other stuff that popped up as I was going through my literature review. So yeah, this scientist possibly could have made these swans resistant to HIV, but in that sacrifice, they're going to be pretty much susceptible to everything else for the rest of their lives. And here's another thing. These embryos were perfectly healthy. So yes, I said that the father was HIV positive and the mother did not have HIV. But just because of that, that doesn't necessarily mean the babies are gonna end up being HIV positive as well. There's still a possibility that they could, but it's not complete certain that they're gonna be HIV positive. They could just come out just fine. Also keep in mind, this was an in vitro fertilization. So they took, like I said, they took the embryos and they fertilized the embryos. So when you do that process, you're pretty much washing the HIV away from the embryo. So they're not going to even take in HIV. So they're going to be totally fine. And my whole thing is, if you're going to do this, do it on like an embryo that you know has a serious genetic disease and they're going to have it as soon as they're born into this world and they're going to have a short term life. It still will be unethical, but it will still have a more rationale to it. I mean, this, you're just making them immune, so-called immune to HIV. I mean, just protect yourself, guys. Now I'm going to jump into the unethical reasons behind this, which you guys are probably already know the reasons, even if you don't have a scientific background. For one, what this scientist just did was he pretty much made a choice for two individuals that had no say whatsoever. It's indeed one thing that if you're making CRISPR modification on adults, like that's actually going on now. Like, but yeah, it's one thing you, if you do that because that person knows the consequence of what they're doing. These twins had no say whatsoever and they're gonna be stuck with this for the rest of their lives. They're probably more than likely not gonna be able to have offsprings or have kids because if this mutation ends out being very destructive as their lives go on, you don't wanna pass that down to your, your offsprings because they'll have it too. And then I just can't imagine them growing up going through school and they have their classmates saying, oh, don't mess with that kid. That's the one that got mutated. Like, that's stuff that they're going to have to go through the rest of their lives. And it's just because you wanted to do something that had no complete rationale to it at all. Another point that I'll point out, and it's sort of a bit random, but it kind of ties into this. So these couples voluntarily signed up to do this. I believe they survey like seven couples or something of that nature. And basically what happened is these couples sat down with this scientist and they basically just talked about the procedure or he explained the procedure to them. Now, if you think about it, that's not a good idea. Put it this way, let's say you're buying a home and 
you want to be sure the home checks out. And so the realtors or the company that you're buying a home from, they're like, oh, well, we can give you our inspector who's employed by us and paid by us to inspect the house for you. You're not really going to want to do that because that inspector has bias to that company. Like more than likely, you're going to get an inspector from a third party that has no bias to inspect the home for you. And that's pretty much what just goes on here. These couples, they want to have a child real badly. So I can imagine they were emotionally, uh, they made emotional decisions. And this scientist, he really wanted to get this going. So he was just probably explaining like how this will work. But what should have happened, you should have had a third party representative that came in there, analyze what was going on, analyze the whole project and relay that information back to the couples and gave them their perspective and their opinions on it. That would have been more ethical. And of course, obvious reason is that this can lead to a slippery slope to people playing God. Like a lot of people and a lot of scientists are worried about this because they're worried that people with loads and loads of money, they'll start trying to go in the black market or whatever and try to use CRISPR to make like babies, like let's say as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger, tall as Yao Ming, uh, the looks of Brad Pitt or something like that. And when you get to that point, my personal belief, that's just completely wrong. That's, no. So all in all, this is a really bad apple for the science community. That's why everybody is such an uproar about this. Like I said, when CRISPR first came out a couple years ago, everybody was real excited about it. I'm using CRISPR in my dissertation project. Like, it has, it's that powerful and it's, we were thinking like it's indeed the future. I mean, this can solve disease problems that we weren't able to solve before. Uh, crop problems, we can save them from diseases. It opens up a whole playbook of things we can do with this technology. But now when you have anybody from the general public that has no scientific background whatsoever, if they Google CRISPR, this is the first thing that's gonna pop up. And so now let's say decades down the road when we understand this technology more and we got it down to where we understand the risks and the uh, benefits of it, and we make a drug that can actually save lives, the general public's gonna look at this like, oh, that's gonna be like the Chinese scientists back in uh, 2018. Take the whole vaccine gets you autism example. Vaccines have been proven time and time again that they're good for you, they don't do anything to you. But because you had this one scientist put out a study saying like, oh, vaccine, correlates to autism. Despite him admitting he falsifies the study and him getting his license revoked and whatever, you got people out here still today believing that vaccine causes autism just because of this one false study. And this is the same thing that could happen to CRISPR because you got this one study that was controversial, might not even work, and now when we finally get CRISPR going like decades from now, People they're gonna look at this. Like I said, it's just the same goal that one bad apple ruins the whole bunch or whatever. So anyway, to conclude this video, it's been put out, this Chinese scientist, his lab has been halted, like his work has been stopped. He's no longer allowed to do any more work until further investigation. He's probably gonna get locked up for some time. The government's already calling it illegal and ethical. Uh, the university said it breaks their code of conduct, so he's probably gonna get fired. But despite that, this announcement has already caused a fast for years to come to the scientific community and to the entire world. This was not the right time to do this experiment. There's a lot we don't know about this subject. And then the whole rationale of this experiment was just totally wrong. It was unethical. However, one thing I will point out was I was discussing this with my friend yesterday, with one of my friends. And I was telling him that it wasn't a time to do this study because we don't fully understand CRISPR yet. And he brought up a good point because he had said, if we wait until we fully understand something, we won't get anywhere. Because there's a lot that goes on that we don't fully understand yet. And that's a, indeed a valid point. Like, I don't think we're ever gonna fully understand CRISPR like 100%. But I do think we can get it to the point where we understand to where like, we can sit down with a couple and like, okay, look, if we do this technology, this are the benefits, these are the risks. You have between 10% to 30% of this happening and yada yada, like we'll have it down to a science, I guess. <laughs> and you know, one day I actually do hope like decades down the road, we can understand CRISPRs to the point 
where we can actually start curing babies that have genetic autoimmune disease. That will be able to give hope to couples that because of their alleles or because of their genes that they're not allowed to have a baby right now because that baby will end up getting that disease that we're able to bring CRISPR and overcome that. I hope we get to that point indeed. But now, now is not the time. That's all I got. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully I didn't keep it too long. I don't really do this a lot, but I was just so emotionally charged by this, or I guess I had a strong opinion on this. And I kind of realized what effect that could have on the general public that I figured that I would relay that out so that way you guys can understand it too. If you like this, I can do more of these. They don't have to necessarily be about science. It could just be about just general news stuff like politics or just stuff that goes on in this, in this world or country in general. I had people tell me that I have a unique voice, I have a great voice and actually be doing podcasts or radio. Maybe I'll just start doing this instead because that way you can see my imperfections on my face and whatnot. But yeah, leave comments on what you think about this. Hit that like button. Uh, let me know if you got questions. I have other channels. I got links up in the descriptions, wherever they may be at. So, until next time, peace!